Hey, welcome in to the Spalling Brothers Show with Wes and Wyatt. Wes didn't want to do the intro, so I just did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Wyatt, let's just not do the intro. Let's get into it. I didn't know what to say. Okay. Okay, Wes, you got to do the intro. That's what a podcast is. So today we're going to talk about just our lives, what we're up to, Wimbledon that's going on now. And a tennis tournament that Wes and I will play in. So Wes, how's the business going for you so far? Uh, so far, just coaching at Strength to Strength still, and we're just uh, coaching some athletes, um, helping assistant coach a lot, and I'm just trying to gain my own my clientele right now, which is I think it's the hardest part is like getting leads and finding leads and making connections. Long term, though, I think. Um, it's going to work out pretty well. It's like just play a long game of building relationships with people and trying to just, you know, get connections with high school coaches, um, club teams, uh, want to hopefully like get a, like a junior golf program or make some connections with some like golf instructors and hopefully like a tennis club or something like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like those are some areas that maybe don't, get advertised a lot that strength training like or the strength trainers not advertised maybe like how the benefits of that can help and what we do with joint health could really help tennis players and golfers i think and working on trunk rotation obviously helps a lot all athletes but you know i think that would be fun to kind of get into two sports that i didn't play and starting to play a little more and i uh, still want to look for like a basketball team hopefully that i can help out with too so just a building process and gets frustrating at times, but in the long run, you know, just got to keep making little steps, little connections every day. So yeah, nothing too crazy. Just like, you know, at is like, you just do boring, not the boring work, but you just pretty much do the same thing every day. Like you just keep doing the same thing, make little adjustments if you need to. Sometimes it's just like a waiting game and like a time game. Yeah. Like, like when I started my job at Special Olympics, like, we want you to make some YouTube videos and, of you like working out and stuff and after a little while I was just like I don't think you want me to make them because I do the same thing all the time people mm -hmm. don't want to see the same thing over and over but that's how you get good you do the same workout every day same routine and that's why a few people are probably pretty good if you compare like look at everybody that plays sports there's probably only a handful of people that get to be really good at certain sports it's because they do the same thing every day and people yeah, don't want to do that yeah and you just make like just make little adjustments yeah so training just make little adjustments to the pace or the weight or the reps like you don't need to completely switch it up all the time especially if you're an athlete your job is to expand your game so you might be switching up more in practice what you're doing what, what you're working on but like weight training and you, i mean it, you can keep it pretty simple to get the maximum results a lot of times you know you're trying to make it look fancy for social media or coaches are trying to switch it up because they get bored and I've realized that like about myself like I'm like oh let's switch it up like now like it's better to stay consistent master these lifts these movements it's going to help athletes maximize their game the fastest with the least amount of work if that makes sense yeah for sure yeah I mean and like I think that a lot of people like like that stuff you want to get good at something you enjoy doing the same thing every day. Like the other day I, I played basketball and I did a little bit of a different workout, but it was basically the same thing. Like instead of shooting, like let's say like 200 shots, I had to make a hundred shots. So mm -hmm. I did that. So like, I'll switch up a workout. Like today I have to make a hundred shots. The next day I have to shoot 250. It doesn't matter if I make or miss them. I just have to shoot 250 shots. Like basically like the same thing because you're working on the same shot, but just like, I don't know, in the different way you do it. And some days, yeah. I think it's good just to shoot around and listen to music. Like, you don't even think about it. You just shoot. But, yeah, I mean, like you said, like, what you've been telling me because you've been training me is, like, people need to lift so they don't get injured, right? And honestly, like, this is probably the easiest thing to do compared to, like, going to do a basketball workout because basketball workout could take you, like, over an hour sometimes, honestly. Depending on what you want to do. 
And lifting, it's like you can lift for like get a good lift in within 30 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour, probably. Which I yeah. realized like on the days I'm really busy with work. I was like, all right, I'm gonna be super busy on this day, probably have an hour. So I'll go lift. Even though it's my least favorite thing to do. Like the other day, I was like, I got to the gym and I was about to get the car and I was like, what's wrong? I was like, I just don't want to lift. It's nice and hot out today. I want to go play tennis. I was like, yeah. but I, I only have time to do this today. And it honestly would probably make me better because that's why I need to work on the most is strength. Because I weigh less than 100 pounds. I'm five foot four, almost five foot five, and have one good arm. So, yeah, strength is probably important. So, dude, are you growing? I don't think so. I might be almost five five. If I got to five eight, that'd be a miracle. That's what I wanted when I came out of the back surgery. Like when I came out of this back surgery where they pulled my spine back up, I was like five foot three within 10 hours, which was crazy. Yeah, it's you've grown a little bit since surgery. Maybe, I guess. I think people too didn't really realize like I stretched out. Like my arms and legs just stretched out because my spine was straight. Because think about it, the first 18 years, I was leaning like you would if you were just leaning against a wall or something. I just yeah, but you can go left. keep. I mean, you call it stretch out, call it growing. Like you were five three, now you're like almost five five. Like you definitely have grown almost two inches. Yeah, within like ten years. But like, I don't like. There was one point people thought I grew, but I didn't. I was still five four or five mm -hmm. three. I just stretched out. Like I think, I also got bigger. Like I think people don't realize. Like, like the past couple of summers, that's blood sugar issues, so can't go outside. When it's super hot out sometimes, so I go lift. I think just like the lifting makes me seem like I've grown, but I just probably look bigger. It's like getting wider shoulders. Yeah, probably. Like sometimes I swear, like I can't get my walk aid on because it's like you get swole like after your lift or, or whatever. And it's just like, okay, I gotta like loosen this thing up. My, I can't fit around my leg right now. <laughs> got some blood flow going. Yeah. So just in that pump, legit, you just got the pump. So uh, have you like been like studying like how you would like do strength training with let's say tennis or golf is interesting to me because I don't think of strength training when I think of golf, you know? Yeah, so like everybody wants to do sports specific training, but their sport is sports specific training because you're going to be using those muscles in your sport. So we just do, if we can make somebody stronger, and faster then they're going to be better at their sport because they're going to have more muscle and they're going to have faster twitch muscle um whether you know middle school or high school or college adult athlete um like they're just going to be able to use their body better so we just teach their bodies and teach them how to use their bodies correctly so like everybody has a bicep all biceps work the exact same everybody has hamstrings everybody's hamstrings work the exact same a lot of times we just have bad compensation. So we're going to compensate in some way, which causes maybe some shoulder pain, knee pain, ankle pain, whatever. So what we do is we just try to teach people how to you or how to teach their muscles how to work right. So that way they can learn how to move right. And then they go out and play their sport and their muscles are able to do what they're supposed to do. Helps them like move better, um, perform better. And obviously we get somebody stronger. They're going to have... Uh, more muscle to work with when, um, you know, they're swinging a racket or um, swinging a golf club. And a lot of it too is a lot of people, even myself included, very weak, like in your trunk, like everything starts from your trunk. So your core, and there's more abdominal muscles, more like trunk muscles than you think, you know, you got your external obliques, you got your, um, it's called your TVA, transverse abdominis, and it wraps like all the way around. And a lot of people just, we just don't use them very well because we sit all day or, you know, we compensate in some other way. So like training that alone is going to help people like rotate better in their swings and every sport you're rotating, every sport you're using those, um, trunk muscles and especially your external obliques. So, um, yeah, long story short is we just make people really healthy, really strong and really fast. So that way they can feel better and perform better. So like, are you like, look, so like, I think you said this at the beginning, but you're specifically like trying to train like athletes, like people that want to play sports or are still playing sports, whether a teenager, or 20, 30 years old or plus, 
right? Yeah, I mean, also train adults, the way we train too, we can adjust it just if somebody wants to you know, gain a little muscle, lose a bit of fat, look better, feel better, not have like joint pain. So mm -hmm. we can adjust, it's super easy to adjust. The training is like the how we lift and how we train. That part is simple and uh, easy and there's not a whole lot of mixing up. Like there's a little bit here and there, but like our main lifts, like we, we, um, we squat and bench every Monday and then we do trap bar deadlift every Tuesday. We do decline bench every Wednesday. Uh, we do, um, split squats every Thursday and we do elevated foot, um, elevated rear, rear foot split squats every like, um, Wednesday or Friday, just kind of depending on what we're doing. And then we just add things in and it's just the same. And we have guys who are, you know, pulling up like five, 600 pounds on the trap bar deadlift. It's crazy. And it's just because like, we're trying to do minimal work for maximum amount of effort or maximum amount of, of results. So we don't want to overtrain somebody in the weight room because it's going to put more stress on their joints. So we just want to be super efficient, get their bodies to work right. Um, get their joints to move where they need to move for their body. So that's the hard part is looking at somebody or every athlete and being like, all right, how is this lift going to be correct for their body? How do we adjust them? How do we help them do this lift to get the most out of this lift for their body? Uh, take you, for example, like I would, we have to train you like way different than all other athletes because of your physical limitations and, you know, taller athletes, we're not going to have them go as low in a squat because then they're not going to be like getting the benefits from a squat because they're putting in other places. If we're just worried about them getting super low, same thing goes for like shorter athletes. Like we're going to get them to their right spot in a squat or deadlift or bench. So that way they can take care of their shoulder, but they can still like get the right muscles working for those lifts. Um, so I'm like right. studying more and more about the body. Uh, it's like I'm back to school, but really, you know, in professions you just keep learning and so learning again and better about how like joints work how muscles work um how to see it in real time how to adjust people i think that's the hardest thing too like i could see something but it's just hard to be like all right how do i adjust them to get the attention in the right spot but mm -hmm. it's cool and you know you talk to kids talk to athletes and kind of to see what they believe and why they believe it whether it's in their sport or lifting or just anything else so it's cool. I I love, forgot how much I love training athletes. Like I feel like the intensity level, it's kind of like their main goal. Hopefully, you know, some kids, it's like, you got to be patient with them and might not be their main goal, but you know, you can, you can't like force, you can't, you know, lead somebody to water and make them drink it. Yeah. You, know, you can lead them there, but you know, they got to want it. They got to drink the water. So you yeah. could drown them. You could just, you know, put yeah, their head just, in like, and drown suffocate them. them. Like, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, probably not the best way. Yes. Go on that, but would you say like so like for adults, like would you say it'd be better for them? Like, like I always would say, like I don't want to be that adult. Like, 10, 20 years from now, like my workout is just I just lift and run several times a week, and that's it. Like, would you say like that's good or like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not like 22, 25 anymore. I can't play pick up basketball or start another sport. Would you say just like let's say you kept playing sports until you were like 70 something or 80 something. Would you say that keeps them healthier and prevents them from having injuries than just like completely stopping and not playing any sports at all? So sports is one of the most unpredictable things and it's so hard on your body in the first place. Personally for me, I want to play sports till the day I die. And I think um, everybody should find a sport that they like could be like frisbee golf, you know, could be bocce. That's like a popular special Olympic sport, which is fun to play for yeah. anybody. And I think the reason why you should play sports for as long as possible is because of that variability. And it's just going to keep your body like guessing and using all these muscles and moving in different directions that you're just not used to. But also just like the social aspect, like technology is just advancing more and more. Dude, I heard this really good quote where this guy was just talking about how he invests in sports because he's like, there's going to be a time when we're so far into AI that you could like get anything so quick, like in your phones, like a dopamine hit right now. You can get anything you want to see like right now, but people are going to be craving 
you're going to be craving the human interactions and sporting events is going to be that human interaction where it's unpredictable. You know, it's like people are going to want that connection. Like when you're at a game, people are like, oh, I can see better on TV. But, you know, you know, you and me talk about this all the time. When you're at a game, like the energy from the crowd and like you can just like feel it. It's like yeah. a human connection and you have no idea what's going to happen. Like crazy stuff happens because, you know, we're humans and we're just like make no sense sometimes. And it's chaos. Like like sports are organized chaos. And uh, just I think kind of rolling back to what I was saying from just adult standpoint, especially guys like guys just we're bad at making friends we're actually like a majority yeah. of guys stuck at making friends but what are you gonna do you can go play sports with your buddies exactly. or like video games you know video games are fine but you know you need some physical activity right and cardio kind of sucks because it hurts <laughs> yeah. but like you're not thinking about it when you're playing a sport you know yeah like for sure like go play basketball go play tennis you know go play golf like walking like you know I know people love doing the carpet once in a while, just walk nine holes. And yeah, it's watch, totally different. Walk three or six holes. Like, that's fine too. Like, yeah. you do that. Do the, or, like, do for the me, Twilight yeah, stuff. like for me, I got to get into different sports because, you know, it's hard for me to play pick up basketball if it's not Special Olympics. Tennis is one of like, the only sport I can really do right now, which is great because it's so physical. But I'm, I'm good enough at it. I can play outside of uh, Special Olympics also. And I've been playing this league. Like you could go play. Not every, like you said, not every sport is like it has to be like physical movement. You could do. Let's we talked about bocce. There's pickleball, frisbee, golf. Right, that's the one you don't have to move. Disc golf. Yeah. Disc golf. Right. Yeah. Frisbee golf. Yeah, you, 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 walking too. Yeah, frisbee golf is like a lot of moving, but just, actually that's fun too. Ultimate so, frisbee. You mean ultimate that frisbee? Called? That's it. What's frisbee golf? My, that's disc golf too. That's yeah. That's disc golf. I don't know. Whatever. First we go off disc golf. They're like the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So you can do that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of sports, whether you're moving a lot or not. You know, everyone can play something. Like that's always my like social thing is going to like today I went to softball practice this morning. It was like it's supposed to be like over a hundred a day. And so it was super hot in the morning and it was fun. I had really good practice. I had contact every time with the ball, which is huge for me because I'm terrible at hitting. And I didn't, I feel the really underhand pitch. Yeah. Slow pitch nice. softball. So do you guys pitch? You guys pitch, right? Yeah. Yeah, you we can, pitch. but usually our pitcher is a unified player. Uh, it's okay. traditional too. So we have 12 teams in the state of Nebraska that play softball right now. And only four are unified. And the rest of the okay. eight are traditional. And are you so, unified? Yeah. We're a unified okay. team. We actually have two teams. Our delegation is like really big for cool. softball. And so, Kind of hoping I play on the JV team just because safety reasons and it's almost not my you best. You want to play Yeah. I mean, I'm going to play <laughs> either way. That's why we have two teams because so everyone can start because we play 10. And because the 10th person is like a like a rover, like they go throughout the outfield or whatever. And so um, but I think I'm going to play second base because today uh, it was me and this other dude, and they'll probably split us up on e either team and I'll play second base where last year I played right field. Let's go. Yeah, so not saying for sure because last year I played second base a lot in practice. Then I played right field. Right field's good. You know, I can move in the outfield. Very good at, like, tracking the ball down. Not very good at catching it, but, like, if I know I can't catch it, I'll just get in front of it, let it hop, get it, throw it. And I, I have one of the, the most accurate arms on the team. If I, oh, yeah. if I throw it far, I'm really good at getting there on the bounce with only one hop. So, But we played catch so much. As the mm -hmm. kids growing up, like that's what we did, like every summer, pitch and catch, catch with dad. I mean, wolf ball probably helped. Wolf ball was fun. We play like one on one, and it, yeah. it was fine because like you could like beam it at me, and it wouldn't hurt that bad because it's like oh this won't hurt because it's not a baseball, so you could hit it, but you never really hit it at me. You more hit it like over me. <laughs> like oh. yeah, I remember. Yeah, we were we had the rule where you could like throw it and if you hit them, they were out. Yeah, because it's just one on one and wiffle ball. Yeah. And then like I'm pretty sure you'd like, always you'd always like make a play at the plate. Yeah, and you would always set it up. Just like because I didn't really realize at the time, like, oh, this is very competitive. What were you probably like seven? And then like at eight, nine, and ten, it was like, yeah, they probably just like messed up a couple times so I could score. And then once the game was online, you like 
you can like like see like oh he's like legit going all out like this is like like a league baseball game now because he's trying to win and then i would always try to like i couldn't slide like i can only dive and slide on my stomach I you would like fall yeah or I would just try to ram you. You'd be like, you'd be like, dude, did I slide? And I'd be like, dude, you fell. You literally just <laughs> fall. <laughs> it was a very slow motion fall too. Like, but well, you can like push, can like push off your legs. No, I don't. Right I can't away. even like do it now. Like it's like I have to think about. It. I can't like naturally do it. I can naturally jump and like put my arms out inside of my stomach, but I can't slide the other way. It's too hard. But uh, yeah, so kind of back to what I was saying. Like, you know, that's my social thing and. Rest of the day, I'll, after this, I'll probably just chill, watch sports, movies. But that was my social thing for the day was going to softball practice. Mm. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like you said, like it's always fun to do stuff like that. Uh, I think it's called like Shoot 360. And it's like here in Lincoln and it's like this basketball thing where you're on the gun where it shoots out basketballs and you can shoot it. Mm. And you can compete against like other people around like other shoot 360s around the u.s no way and, yeah cool. and i think i think there's a like a shooting league you can do so i'm gonna go there one day and be like hey like is there like stuff for adults here because i called one time and they were like oh it's just for like kids and then if you play college sports or whatever i'm just mm -hmm. like a, at the time we we're 28 so i told them, like i'm just a 20 year old don't shoot hoops but like who doesn't mind just like go out and shoot hoops? that's like not even a hard workout because you can yeah. literally just stand there and shoot. Like, that's what's great about basketball. It's so easy to, like, do it by yourself. And I can't tell you how many times, like, I'd be sick or have some medical thing for weeks. And then finally, when I could come back, I'd go shoot baskets. Even if it was tennis season, I needed to practice tennis. Like, I'd go serve, and that was easy. But basketball was easy to do to get a workout in, but not overdo it. Because you could literally just stand there and shoot, even if you felt, like, super weak. Mm -hmm. So... I think that's one of the good things about basketball and or like, you know, baseball, you have to find someone to like catch with. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's why pickleball is so good though. It's like everybody's playing it. You could probably find a place where there's a lot of people playing and you can just hop in and play and you yeah. can meet a lot of people. Like you meet it. Like could be 78 years old playing a 17 year old. Like yeah. everybody's playing it now. For sure. Dude, do you what's know your what you take on? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, what you take on? Um, like if tennis players play pickleball, are you like totally against it? Like, I got was at first because like all my other friends were, you know, and then like, so you know, dad and I would play unified special like, tennis together, and now he can't really play, and he's kind of he could play, but it, it would hurt his back because of his surgery. But mm -hmm. I think he he said he blew out his shoulder because dad would serve so hard. So mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know, our dad played at like a four oh four five level. And that's really, really high, like in just like USTA adult tennis leagues. And so like he would serve really hard and he, I think he just blew out his shoulder because he, you know, he's a pitcher in college and then he's like serving super hard. So the motion of it. And so I like, oh, I kind of want to play some with dad. And I was like, I would play like, um, I wanted to play a uh, unified special like bocce with them, but it's always on the same day as state tennis. So it's like, oh, and dad wants me to, you know, dad, it's like, oh, I'd rather you have to play tennis because you like it more. And it's like, all right. So, mm -hmm. and I want to play too, but uh, I was like, oh, I'll play pickleball with him. So I'm like on the RV trips we take, I'll play pickleball. And um, like, I'm good at it because I play tennis. Like, like dad plays in the morning three times a week. And he's like, people all know that he's played tennis because you can always tell like who the tennis players are. I can't remember. Like, Probably have a swing or something. Yeah, it's like. And some of them, he was like, I don't know, like, Dad calls it, like, finesse. Like, he kind of hit it softer, try to place it. And Dad just, like, tries to, like, sometimes hit the shit out of it. <laughs> and he, yeah. like, puts so much spin on it. And uh, with me, I, like, could just react. It's just, like, at the net in tennis to, like, playing. But then, like, my thing with pickleball and tennis is that people that play pickleball, they take over the tennis courts at the parks. It's like it's not a pickleball court. And he's like, well, there's pickleball lines on the court. It's like, yeah, but the net's not even like pickleball, a pickleball regulation. net. Yeah, regulation. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm glad they have these pickleball courts now with parks and stuff. And I get it. It's an easier sport to play. Tennis players can play pickleball because they're athletic enough. Pickleball players can't pick up a racket and just go play tennis. It's a lot yes. harder. And you have to yeah. be a lot tougher. 
like mentally because you're out there not for like you could, i mean you could play pickleball for like 20 30 minutes like tennis you're going to be out there for an hour plus Well, they play pickleball for like hours on end, but it's just you more can of a running but intense. like isn't the game score like to 11 or something or i don't Yeah. know yeah so it's Well, like you play, I think, but it's like sets. Like you think you probably they probably play like three sets to eleven. i don't i don't know look up the rules I, I don't know the rules that well but i just know with tennis it's two out of three you know third set tiebreaker sometimes sometimes you play the whole third set you're out there for a while and so it just it's a lot harder but Dude, and the i cardio don't piece, man. yeah Cardio, i mean man. man. Makes you mentally tough and long. And like you said, it you're does out there by yourself. but pick up all like i mean it helps your reaction time for sure and it can be tough like Honestly, you see more doubles, just like, honestly, just like tennis. You see more doubles than singles in pickleball and tennis. And, uh, but if you watch, like, pickleball singles, because I watch it on YouTube, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, those guys are athletic. To play pickleball singles, like, holy crap. Like, those guys are good. Like, I, I'm not going to, like, say they're not athletic. Because, like, if you play singles in tennis or pickleball, like, that's hard. to do and so yeah i just like don't like the pickleball players taking over tennis courts when there's not even a pickleball uh regulation net on there now i go to this tennis court where there's two tennis courts and like two pickleball courts and that's cool you know you play tennis over here you play pickleball over there that's great and they're probably taking down more crappy tennis courts because they don't take care of the courts they're putting in pickleball courts and i'm cool with that because like well no one's gonna play tennis on air why why not just make a pickleball But Yeah. I just don't like it when you're going to go play tennis and then there's a bunch of pickleball pl ball players playing on a tennis net. I was just like, and we've done that before. Like our last camping ground had a basketball court and a tennis court and dad wanted to play pickleball and we found this other guy. <laughs> so it's like me, mom and dad and this other dude and we played Just doubles. random dude. Yeah. Like he literally came up. It's like, Hey, you want to, uh, can I play uh, pickleball with you guys? Like, and dad's like, sure. So like, all right. And I know they do it. And, Honestly, if you belong to a facility, like it's called the Woods Tennis Center here in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really nice. And honestly, like they'll, they'll always have good courts and they keep up with the courts. So that's the bad thing about like kind of park courts. It's like sometimes they don't keep up with them. So like yeah they turn really crappy. But then no one goes to them. So it's kind of nice if you like to practice there. But mm -hmm. yeah, just my take on tennis and pickleball. I mean, dad's always like, you should go and... uh You know, go in the evening when people your age go and play pickleball. And I'm always hesitant because I gotta stick to tennis. I gotta be on the tennis side. But I was like, ah, I mean, it's hard to be what? So mom says? Dad. Oh, dad says that. Dad Okay. said it. I mean, mom probably for it too, but dad says it. And I'm just like, I don't know. And, but I probably will break down and go eventually because I meet a lot of people in tennis. But like around our age, they're playing like 4 0, 4 5, like at the top, most Yeah. of them. Where I'm playing 3 0. Where I, I mean, I've made a lot of good friends who like playing in these three old tennis leagues, but they're some of them like they have families and they're like 20 years Different stage older. of life. Yeah, exactly. And so, but I don't, I don't care. I, I could be friends with anyone. I have a couple, one or two really good friends that I've played with, and I don't care if they're like 10, 20 years old than me, you know, if you have something in common with somebody. But it is kind of nice to play, meet people your own around your own age and. So I might just track out and do it after I'm done playing tennis. Never play pickleball and then tennis. You got to play tennis, then pickleball. Because it's very hard, like, the depth perception between, like, like reacting to the ball. We played pickleball first one day on vacation, and then I hit with mom for tennis. It was very hard. Like, I was playing tennis. Yeah, you just like sail it to the back fence. Yeah, or you miss the ball completely. <laughs> Like, yeah, you're like, it's awful. oh, it's Like, like way so I'm farther like... away. So I'm like with mom and dad, we were on vacation. I'm like, we gotta play tennis first, and then I'll play pickleball because it's easier to transfer like that. I mean, and the ball is bigger than pickleball. So, what do you think of like the pickleball, like, you know, like with a hopper with the tennis ball, you have to pick up a bunch of tennis balls? But didn't you say they have one for pickleball too? I get that for practice. I guess I get it for practice. I was Yeah. talking some some smack on it to you the other day, though. I was just Yeah. like, the court's so small. Like, but I I guess know. if you like practicing and you just need to like, you know, hit a lot. If you're like a coach or something or practice somebody, you need to get a lot of reps in. I understand that. But, but yeah, and then I don't know. Like we played pickleball a couple times, and it's like so the court's so short. It's like 
feel like if you have three balls on there, the balls are just like in the way. Like I'll send them, you know, we'll step it on a ball. So it's like just play with one ball, but they always yeah. give you three, like tennis. I was thinking about it. That part I never said, but I, I get it. I get the hopper now. I wasn't at first. Yeah. I was like, okay, it would make a little more sense for practice. I was thinking about it. And because I played softball, I was like, no, oh, if I took a crappy pickleball, you could probably use it good for like hitting or, you know, practicing softball. Cause they have like these okay. balls you can use to practice mm -hmm. with and uh but you have to buy them in the baseball and softball section but i was like well you could probably use a pickleball to practice anything too just a ratty one but um back to tennis though who yeah. you got so for those who don't know tomorrow is the wimbledon finals for tennis so it's like this huge probably it's like the oldest tennis tournament right yeah or like it's the most it's the one with the most history i don't yeah. want to say it's the oldest it probably is but I don't know the facts. So I know it has the most history though. I'm on it's like so. It's in London, right? Yep. It's in London. We've been playing for like two weeks. 128 people, men's and women's singles. S women's singles was today. We won't talk about that one because I know who won. Why it doesn't yet. But who do you got? Why you got Djokovic? And he's like, for those of you who don't know, he is uh he's like LeBron James, like a vet. He's been playing forever. Uh, he's, he's got 24 Grand Slams, so he's won 24 of the major titles, right? Yeah, let me look it up. He's got... He's, he's got, got, like, a, one more, and then he's the most of all time, women yeah, in. Yeah, because Serena has 23. I know Federer has 20, because I was like, once Djokovic and Nadal got past 20, I was like, damn. Like, I wanted Federer to, like, get more than 20, but 20 is obviously pretty good. Very good. It's incredible, dude. Dude, it goes, it goes Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, and I don't even think anybody's close. Like the next is like thirteen or something. Yeah, I gotta look at my phone. It's too hard on my bed. Look this up. But, and then there's um, Alcaraz, the new Spaniard. If Nadal didn't retire, so I don't know if he's retiring yet, but he is twenty-one. I don't know how old Djokovic is, but why? Who do you got? You got uh, Djokovic or Alcaraz winning tomorrow? I'm going for Alcaraz, but I wouldn't be surprised Djokovic won because I think Alcaraz has like he has had a couple of matches where he hasn't looked the best like right away in the match, and then he's like come back and won because like he's so good like he can win ugly like not play the best but still win like his court coverage is insane. When he played mm -hmm. uh, Medvedev the other day, he made yeah. some shots that were like how did he get to that? That's that was crazy. And I don't know, but like last year he he lost the first set. I remember like six one, like he looked terrible. Like you could tell he's nervous. And then he like came back and won in five sets. And so I'm going Alcaraz, but wouldn't be surprised if Djokovic won. I'm glad this is the final because it's a repeat of last year. So it's yeah. like, oh, what if Djokovic like wins? And then next year will be even better because these guys are tied one one. Now they're back in the finals for a third year. So. I think uh, it's good, get a little rivalry going there, especially with like Federer tying, you know, Nadal. You don't know if he's going to make it on the court sometimes because he, he's so injury three yeah. And it's just like mentally, too. Like Alcaraz looks like he's having so much fun out there. Like he's smiling. He's looking like he's having a good time. He also probably knows, like, like, like I had a match like this on the 4th of July. I won the first set 6-0, and then I was down 1-4 and then won the set 6-4. But I, like, had so much confidence in my strokes that, like, in my consistency because I practiced so much. Like, oh, I'm going to win. I got it. Like, I'm not worried. I just need to, like, wake up and stop making stupid mistakes. And I swear that's what Alcaraz and, like, Djokovic do in matches. Like, they're like, oh, I'm fine. I lost first set. I'll be fine. I'll beat this guy. There was one... I want to say it was the U.S. Open. And Djokovic had lost, like, the first set, like, almost every match. But then it ended up winning in, like, four or five sets. And I'm like, hey. he's probably just like, I got it. I'm Djokovic. I'm going to win this. I just need to warm up. Like, sometimes you warm up in the in the match. Like, I honestly, like, I don't mind warming up in basketball. I like it. I'll take more time. I warm up in basketball. But in tennis, I'm just like, let's just play. <laughs> like... I mean, I think you should warm up, but I think anything over a five minute warm up is like stupid for, to me because I'm just like, I'm just going to warm up as I play. 
And I like as the match goes along. Like I have lost sets. Dude, like like there's oh, so much sick. running in tennis. I know. But the first like two games, you're warm. Yeah, like, but then sometimes it's like you're trying to read the player and you don't know, or like I've gotten like overwhelmed by like how hard or how fast they hit. So then like as the first set's going along or the second set, I'm like, okay, they hit this hard, I can react like this, I can do this, prop shot him here, you know, hit it over here. He's got weak, weak back end, his forehand, he puts spin on in on the run or something like that. And mm -hmm. just like, and I also have the like the the mindset, and I wouldn't be surprised if Alcaraz, Alcaraz has to because he's so athletic and so fast. Like, I could run all day, and these guys don't want to run all day, <laughs> so yeah, I got it. Or sometimes it's just like I don't have it today. Like I played two matches over the Fourth of July uh, holiday, and I won one and I lost one. And the one I lost, it was like, I don't know, dude, just keep swinging, man, see what happens. And I like got killed. Like this guy was very good. Hard sir. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. But if you joke to Fitch or Alcaraz and they're not playing each other, it's like, I got this. You know, I'm Djokovic like, also is coming off of like an MCL tear, right? Yeah. And um, I don't I can't remember the injuries Alcaraz has had, but Alcaraz has been hurt before too. And but he's like, I don't know. I think too, Djokovic is just gonna have that thing like. You know, this guy beat me last year. I'm, there's no way I'm letting out Chris beat me again this year. Um, mm. I'm Djokovic. I think I heard too, like, if he wins this one, he will have as many Wimbledon championships as better. Let me look at this real quick. Djokovic, Djokovic will have as many as Federer? Okay, hold on. Djokovic has run 24 major single titles, including yeah, a 10 record Australian Open titles. Oh, dang. Yeah, Australian Open's kind of like his thing. Ten, like almost half of them are from there. Has he yeah. ever won a French? He, I gotta look it up. Look at one Wimbledon. I'm assuming he's won U.S. Open because same as Australia, like hardcore. Yeah. So like, he Australia was like always Djokovic. Federer was Wimbledon and Nadal was French, and then the U.S. Open was always. Like whoever takes it, which was always cool because it was the last Grand Slam of the year, so mm -hmm. it's just like it was kind of cool. Nobody dominated that one, but like I know Federer has seven Wimbledon championships, won like five uh, U.S. Opens, and then six, six Australian, and one French. So okay, that's right, right? Three, five. Then the fact that you know that is crazy. Six is eighteen. Okay, what I say? Seven Wimbledon, right? And then six Australians, so that's the thirteen? Is that right? Three. Yeah. And then six plus seven? Yeah. Or seven plus yeah, seven plus so seven, then six more is thirteen. Right? Yep. yep. So then you got that. So you got five, three, four, five is eighteen. So that's US Open. I think I'm so yeah, two more. Oh no, you got six more. No, I got two. No, I got two more. So for twenty four or Federer, I'm doing Federer because he's one twenty. Oh my bad. Yeah, you got. So he's got to add like seven. I gotta look it up now, dude. It's hard. Like, it's like these guys are just okay. Djokovic. Okay, here's Djokovic's though. So Djokovic has won. Wow, his career record in singles is one hundred and nine, and no. 1,109 wins and 219 losses. It's Djokovic's. But the Australian Open, okay, so here, here's Djokovic's. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, he's tied. Never mind. So he's tied Federer. So he's got to win one more to beat him for Wimbledon. Then he has, like I said, the most uh, Australians. You got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 11 Australians. Dang, that's crazy. Two, three, four US Opens and three French. So then Fetterer has. Come on, Wikipedia, don't let me down. <laughs> um, Fetter has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, eight. Damn it. I got one with the wrong. That's what I was missing. I kept thinking of 2012 because I didn't know if he's going to win it again after 2012. But then he won it uh, 
So he won in 2017. So he has eight Wimbledons, one French Open, two, three, four, five, six Australians, and then one, two, three, four, five U.S. Opens. So dang, he's only got one French. I mean, he yeah, he struggled dog. on clay. Yeah, and I didn't like. Here's the thing. Like, I want to say that Fred is best of all time because he made it look the easiest. He just floated. Which, honestly, is not true. He put in a lot of hard work. It's way harder than what you think. But then, like, you know, Djokovic, he's won the most Grand Slams. And then if you look at Nadal, like, over half of his Grand Slams are, are the French Open. Like, if you – so, let's see here. Without the French Open for Grand Slams – uh, hang on here. It's one like 11 or 12. Yeah. French Opens. So, grandson. Oh, double ribble. These are those doubles. Where the heck is this singles here? Hang on. Singles, career titles, 92. So, okay. So, he's only won two Australian Opens. The French, he's won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. 14 French Opens. And he's got two Wimbledons. He's got one, two, three, three U.S. Opens. Or four, sorry, four. Four U.S. Opens. So if you take away all the French, you know, he's pretty low. But, I mean, that's not to take anything away when he's done in the French King Open. King of clay, man. Yeah, he's a king of clay. So do you take, even though he has more Grand Slams than uh, Federer, do you say Federer is better because he spread it out more, or Nadal? You know, you know, Djokovic is already ahead of him because you have to look at the minor tournaments too. Yeah, because let's see. So Nadal's singles career record is one thousand seven hundred and one thousand and seventy five hundred, and then wins, and then two hundred and twenty five losses. That's eighty two percent. His career titles is ninety two. Fifth in the open era. Tyus ring is one. Then we got Federer. Let's see. Federer. So 92 total championships? Yeah. And then Federer. Let's go to Federer here. Okay. So Federer. Singles career record is 1,251 wins and 275 losses. Career titles is 103. That's second in the open era. So an open air which means like the pro level. Yeah. And then so I think most championships, to be honest. Like Grand Slams or Grand Slams and counting everything else. Grand Slams counting everything else. Okay. Cause then Djokovic is he might be first then. Yeah, Djokovic has gotta have the most. So Djokovic country blah blah blah. Career record for singles. Oh yeah, I said that. Is 11. Oh, what? How many tiles did he have? And, and nine wins into it. What? How many tiles did he have? So, he had career title, just everything. He had 98. That's third in the open era. Dang, who was first? Oh, man. It's probably somebody super old. I think it's like, hang on here. I mean, Djokovic could still beat better in that. What's Rob Labor? I think Djokovic will probably become the best of all time. Like, you'll have. Federer, who's going to be the king of grass? You'll have Nadal will be a king of clay, but then Djokovic will be like all around. Okay, I think it's Rod Laver, who's an Australian, very well known tennis player. He's kind of was the first most popular player, the one that I knew. He had 1,689 wins and 538 losses. That was 75% he won in pre open era and open era. So, like pre open era. It's hard to explain, but it was like if you turned pro, you couldn't get paid. It was one reason why you get paid. So like if you played the Grand Slams, then it was like they wouldn't pay you or something. And then like uh yeah, it was very it's very confusing, but like he was one that kind of started the open era, so you get paid to play in these grand slams and all that. And then you okay. considered like a you weren't considered a pro or something like that. But open era and it's like open era and open era too. So I don't know. It's very confusing. But career titles, he has 189, 72 open era titles listed by ATP. So that's professional tennis. Um, 
is 189 titles. Yeah. So it's right. got to be highest ring is one. So he has Rod Labor has won threes, Australians, and 1960. But he was one of the guys that helped create the open era. Right. Or like advocated for it. Yeah. So you get paid and stuff. That's pretty cool. Because Grand Slam, I have to do more research on it. So sorry, we yeah, don't know. Come on, facts. how do you not know this? Because there's a certain era of like, I want to cover sports. I want to get to like, sometimes when you get to the 1950s or or before that, it gets boring. So I don't look at that. And it's hard yes. to figure it's it out. History. It's where all the sacrifices were made. Yeah, yeah. You know, you look it up. <laughs> you figure yeah, it you're out. Right. But um, I think he's like number one or he's got to be up there. What's this dude? Another Australian. This Roy Stanley guy. Yeah, was 100, no, 100. All right, Wyatt, let's get off the stat train because you yeah. go forever. So, go but yeah, ball. but anyway, pretty soon we're looking up how many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches Federer ate all time before all matches or something. Maybe you didn't eat like that, that, man. You never know. But anyway, uh, it's kind of like up and down. Like, who do you think is the best for the open era in tennis and has the most grand slams? Like, women are easy. Like, it's like Serena Williams is the best all time. Hands down. And well, then, I don't think you really answered. Who do you think? Who did you say was going to win tomorrow? Oh, I think Alcaraz is. But I wouldn't be surprised. Alcaraz. Yeah, I'm going yeah, Alcaraz. I'm Alcaraz. Yeah. So I'm going Alcaraz. He's going to win. I think he's going to go five sets again. Be a classic match of all time. Maybe yeah, hopefully. You know, it's going to start at eight o'clock and at 12 or one. If it goes past one. I'm going to hate that. If it doesn't end at 12 America time, it's just like, Dude, like, is this gonna be over soon? <laughs> so long. I know, right? So, and then who won the women, Wes? I had softball practice this morning, so I didn't get to watch it. And I, I, I stopped watching. Yeah, I can't even. I can't even say her name, but it was not Polini from Ellie. It was the other girl. Oh, uh, I can't say it either. Damn. What country was she from? I couldn't uh, recognize the flag. Yeah. That's Siri. I don't know. Well, anyway, it wasn't the Italian. I wanted her to win. Um, I wanted it? freaking, uh, oh, man, number two, Goff. Yeah, the USA, USA girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, wanted I her want... to win it, too. Yeah. Or, like. She lost to Paolini, the Italian. Yeah. So. And then, or Iga, uh the one that won the French Open, I want her to make it far. Oh too. yeah, number one. Yeah. yeah. So she's good. Yeah, she's really good. And so I think the girl that won it beat her, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. But yeah. Anyways, last thing, you and me making our debut out here in Colorado, Broomfield Open. Um, I legit hurt my elbow like this morning playing basketball. I don't know how, but it is like swollen. I'm like, oh, I'm like, great. I know, but we'll see. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll be good in a week. Yeah, but we're gonna play doubles, both playing singles and three elves, three o doubles, three o singles. It's kind of like a, would you say like a beginner level kind of? Yeah, there's two five, but you start in three o, you'll be fine. Yeah, and so, uh, and we're making our own predictions. Why? What's your prediction for yourself in singles, for me in singles, and for us in doubles? I think for doubles, it's hard to say because we haven't played together since like mm-hmm. 2010. But uh, and we got our asses kicked like pretty badly. And I'd say we go like two and one or one and one. So like, we made it to the third round. Yeah, I could I could see us. I mean, if we lost right away, I wouldn't be surprised either. But I believe in our athleticism. And my kids just see in your strength and speed that we could beat somebody. Unless we like, end up playing like the number one team. But, yeah. But hey, if we play like the number one team right away, you could say we lost the number one team or we beat the number one team. But mm. realistically, I just, to give us like more of a, like a positive note, I said we go two and one. Now, can we win the whole thing? Yeah. It could happen. And I think the one thing we have against them, like going for us when we face everyone, is like, I'm just gonna be real cocky about this. Nobody's in better shape than us. If you think about it. Hopefully. 
Hopefully. I feel like you're in better shape than me, to be honest. Probably. But yeah. I mean, also Right you now, gotta think anyway. about it. We're like, and I mean, I mean, we could play a team that's got like two 40, 50 year olds that are just amazing in 3 0 for some reason. Obviously, it's probably gonna be because they're consistent. But I don't know. We're 29 years old. Like we work out all the time. We're in shape. And I think I believe in our mental game that we'll be more the mentally will. tough. Will to win. Yeah. Obviously, Why, we just, describe a 3 0 player though. Like, a 3 0 player what am I, what am is I someone myself that into? Like, keeps is, like consistent, like three ball rally, like serve. Yeah, it might be really like good one. first serve, really bad second serve. What am I looking at? Yeah, they at? can like, so let's say they have a good forehand and then a terrible backhand and mm. they're, they get their first serve in every other time. Mm. Or okay. like someone that has just started playing tennis. And they're just not that consistent yet. Some people in zero are pretty bad. Some are like pretty good to where it's like, oh, they could play at a low three five level. Like that's the next level up. Or like yeah. I've played guys that like they'll hit really good one or two rallies and like, oh wow, that's something. And then like all of a sudden they'll just hit it way out, like like hit something terrible. So it just is like someone that's beginning. I think the good three L players like. They put spin on the ball, and they know how to do that. So they put a lot of top spin on it, or they can put back spin on their serve, but they don't get it in fifty percent of the time, maybe. Hmm. So I think that's would be a three zero player. Some people do really well, like let's say a th high three five, high three zero player, and they just don't want to move up to the next level because they're dominating and they don't want to get killed at the next level. So they just yeah. stay there. But it's just like. That's how I would describe it. A 3 player is someone that is got doesn't always put pace on the ball, but can hit a good shot every now and then, has only one good stroke, so they only have one good forehand. Their best stroke is their forehand, but their backhand is pretty bad, or they're really good backhand and a terrible forehand or something like that. Or yeah. some of them that don't have a good forehand or backhand, but have a powerful serve, and that's what they depend on. Mm -hmm. Which is honestly the hardest to beat because if they have a hard serve and you can't return, it's very tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what I would say. And some people play 3 0 because they don't know where to start. So it's like, well, this guy should be in 3 5. And 3 5, 3 5 actually, you're explaining. They can place the ball on uh, where they want to put it and they have, they can put spin on the ball. They mm -hmm. just aren't accurate enough to keep it in every single point. I would say like 3 0 players don't know how to place the ball. They don't know like where, like I want to hit it over here, so I'm gonna hit it there. I want to hear, so I'm gonna hit there. Like three five players don't want to do that better than three old players. Mm -hmm. And I know how to do that. Sometimes I don't do it consistently. Um, I play at three oh because I'm just gonna say it, you know, I have physical disability and sometimes like that, like they like, I it's like a negative for me because like oh this guy only has one good hand, I can hit to his back end, or if I hit it here. I know he's not quick enough to get it there, stuff like that. So, but I've played guys too. It's like, like I should have, they should have beat me, and they didn't because they got frustrated with my serve or they were up, and then I ended up hitting some shots and they got into their own head, which happens at every level. They get in their own head and they blow the match, and I've done it before yeah. too. So yeah. it just depends. Like, well, I think Play we got game. What do you what do you think our attitude's got to be going out there? Just, just swing for the fence, man. We're trying to win. We're trying to dominate. Yeah. Like if I was thinking about it, I was like, if I start worrying about getting my serve in, like I'm screwed. I'm best. I'm just like, I'm just going to like win. Like you got to win. So hit the ball, get it in. Like yeah. as long as you get it in, keep it in. We'll be good. I think yeah. if we win our first match, we're going semis for sure. I think if we just get momentum, like we're, we'll be, we'll be good. Cause yeah. what I already know, it's like, you're, I don't know. We haven't played tennis together, but we've played against each other. I'm like, oh, why it's like I already know some of the things like I know you're gonna try to do. Yeah. Cause I put against you, or I just know you because you talk about it. Like, yeah. And we're just and easy, too, like, hey, like, I'm gonna do this, you do that. And you know tennis, and you're like, hey, I need you to do this when this happens. And I'm like, we get, all right. We, we gotta like not care either. Like, like screw it. Like we're just swinging, like you said, go for the fences and uh just go not for literally it. though. Yeah, like we're just gonna like hit the ball and we're going to just go out there and play, man. We haven't played in, like, over 10 years. So it's been 14 years since we played last. I Coming think. out of retirement. 
Yeah, Wes is finally getting into tennis. Like I told him he should have done like years ago, way back in high school. But and yeah, he's but you can only play basketball for so long. Play tennis a lot longer. Yeah, it's like you weren't gonna I think go. I, you know, playing tennis in high school would have been fun. But yeah, you know, I just loved basketball too much. Yeah, same here. Like I don't think tennis was like, even though I played, it wasn't a huge priority for us until after high school. Especially I think if the coach, like, I thought the coach was cool, but I don't know. From what you told me from tennis practice, I think that was the thing too. It wasn't the intensity level didn't seem super high from the outside. Maybe it was. Maybe I'm wrong, but from outside looking in, what you told me it didn't seem like the intensity level was there. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I can't speak to it. I only played one year of high school tennis because I Yeah. just wanted to do other things. And the Mm one -hmm. year I was there because I was at the low bottom, I was at, I think it was on like the biggest team he had in years. It was like 31 players. So I was Oh, like wow. 25. I played with 25 on down to 31. And those guys just kind of like were there to be there. And, you know, I just wanted to take it seriously. And I could have played high school tennis, obviously, but I cared too much. And If I want I wanted to be good and because I had a disability, if I really wanted to be good, I had to quit all my other sports just to just to be good, you know? And maybe be like an alternate, so like the top seven top seven play or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then like eight, nine, ten or whatever, like the alternates on varsity, if that's right. And if I wanted to be an alternate, like I had to like just, you know, just play tennis and I didn't love it enough. And I don't think I could do it now either. I just love sports, which is probably what hurts me in tennis, even in Special Olympics, because there are some guys that just play tennis. And I'm just like, no, I, I can't do that. So I practice it more than all the other ones, even basketball, but like my hours of practice. But still, it's just like I'm going to play other sports. So I think we'll go one and we'll go two and one, one and one, oh and one, but we'll make the championship. Mm -hmm. You can't predict every scenario. I'm going to put that on the, on the, uh, I'm going to put that on the survey on the, on, when we post this, man. Oh, So okay, okay, okay. like, that's a, that's what they get. So, but my thing is we'll go two and one. So, and whatever, Third round. third round. Okay. What do you think we'll Yeah. go? I think we're going to go 0 and 1 or make it to the, the semis and then see what happens from there. I'm, yeah. I'll be at fourth round because there's no wait, there's 12 teams, 16 teams No. in doubles. Yeah, I think I don't there's know. 16 I, I didn't teams. look at it. So, and okay, so for singles. Oh, wait. Are we still on doubles here? Yeah, I think we're say at least there. If we win the first one, we'll get to the third round for sure. Which is, or if as long as that's semis, third or fourth round, Yeah. and then And so, we'll win it all. so for singles, I'm not really, I don't really want to predict because I just don't want to think about it. It's very harder in singles. Like if I get down doubles, Yeah. you're there to pick me up and You get down there to pick you up, which I'm probably be using like the, I'm not going to lie, I'm probably using the F bomb a little bit to pick you up. Like, like let's bleep and go. Come on, man. So, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but like singles, I'm just going to say I'm going to either go 0 and 1, lose the first match and be out of the tournament. Or I'm going to win the whole damn thing because I've done it before. So, I like how it's like all or nothing. well, with me, It's hard because when you get out there, your competitive mind kicks in and you want to win. But with me, it's just like, you know, F it. Like, I'm the only one with a disability probably in this tournament, and I'm good enough where I can compete with these guys. So just see what happens. Just start swinging. What I do is, I like, remember that Mimo thing? Just keep swinging, just keep sw or swimming. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. I'm just like, just keep swinging. Yeah. So, uh... Sometimes I need a button though. I don't have the reaction I'm on some ball and it's like, why'd I swing at that? Just bun it. <laughs> so Yeah, and you when got a pretty good butt to be honest. Like you know how to like control it still. because dad would stand at like the T. So for those of you that don't know tennis, the T is like where the service box is and we get serve get in. And then he would just fire serves at me. I don't have to block them all. It was like No way. my favorite drill. That's So intense. Yeah, we didn't start doing that till we were like, I was like 19, I think, or no, probably like 19 or 20. But anyway, Yeah, it's a little um, older. and with you, I'm going to say you're going to go two and one, or you're going to win the whole thing. So you think third round or all the way? 
Yeah, because you got to think, like, are you as consistent? I don't know. One, I haven't seen you play and for a long time. But you're stronger, faster than a lot of other guys. So, and honestly, if you just – the best thing about playing in a tennis tournament is when you keep going. Like, when I won the Cornhusker State Games last summer, the first term I ever won, there wasn't a special tournament. Like, the more I played, the less I cared because I was so sore. <laughs> like, I was just like – in the finals, I was warming up, and I was like, second place is good. It's fine. I can't really feel – I'm not saying I'm not going to win, but, like, I can't. Like, I'm so sore. And my, my, I got blisters that were pretty bad. And I just, like – and then when I was warming up with this guy, I was like, this guy was the strongest and most athletic guy I played, but he wasn't that consistent. And mm -hmm. so I was just like, I just have to keep the ball in. And sometimes keeping the ball in, it depends on how you play, really, but, like, all you have to do is hit it back and forth and just wait for the other guy to mess up. What what you would do to me half the time mm -hmm. anyway when we started playing each other in high school. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, you're so athletic. And when you get your first serve in, because it's so hard, I think you could win it. So. I really don't know because I've never played. So I have no expectation, which is probably the good thing, the best thing. Yeah. But yeah, so, it's like coaching and try to win the whole thing. Why would you go in their tournament and not try to win the whole thing? Yeah, but you can't think about winning the whole thing. You just got to think at one point at a time, one match at a time. Yeah, like win the point. I'm going to win this point. Yeah, treat like what I learned is like you got to treat every match like it's the finals. That way, when you don't, when you get to the finals, you're it's not easy. Yeah, you're not nervous. So, and that's the hard thing is like once you get through the first match, the nerves kind of calm down. It is hard in the first match, but that's just like, Tennis tournament, basketball tournament, whatever. Like the first game match is always the hardest. Tennis the most season. intense, dude. Yeah. Everybody's got adrenaline flowing. Everybody yeah, everyone's like everyone's fresh. You yeah. Know? So, I guess what I got used to is the altitude, like going up the car house. I wonder if that will affect me or not, but yeah, it'll be fine, you know. So, but yeah. So let's get spots. To... Yeah, hopefully we. uh do good in the tournament. That's what our, probably one of our next episodes will be. How we did. Good, bad, terrible, awful. Wes quits. <laughs> All of a sudden, tries, decides to retire. Why fires Wes? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Or we win. Oh, and just real sink peek. If Wes and I play each other in singles in the tournament, we are creating our own trophy and bringing it and putting it on the court. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens. And thanks for joining the Spalding Brothers Show, and stay tuned for more episodes on fitness, health, sports, and whatever we want to talk about. See ya. See ya.